fancy that I wouldn't have like known. Right, so there was one well, time I was in the yeah. I was in the line for the Coke booth, right? I'm clearly next in line for the Coke booth, right? So the other Coke booth there is occupied. I think he's actually using it for its secondary purpose of sh so there's a guy behind me and then behind him there's another guy a Spanish bloke right and this Spanish bloke he just came out of the toilet with another guy they were obviously like doing a little bit of the dancing powder and they you know couldn't manage to do like he obviously wasn't happy with the amount he done the Spanish guy's like oh, oh, oh let me go first let me go first and I turned to him I'm like no man I'm in line I'm here to take a sh and he goes oh man I need to take a sh too and he pulls out his bag of coke I pull out my bag and I look at him like, I need to take a sh as well because nobody's I'm going to take a shit in this thing and but behind me in between me and the Spanish bloke was another guy later in the night I bumped into that guy again we chatted about that moment in the toilet and then he mentioned he was from Ballymun and I'm like oh no way I know a lot of people from Ballymun right and uh, so like he mentions oh his brother's name and I go no fucking way I know your brother your brother's a piece of shit who attacked me when he was 20 and I was 16 because I called his 16 year old girlfriend a This is what I said and he overheard it because my friend's phone was broken so speakerphone was the only thing that worked and I didn't know this at the time but they overheard me say if I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden and her and I had a revolver with six shots here I'm talking six shots I'd still Shooter six times, and uh, I got jumped by a twenty-year-old man. Literally, I was on a log. This would have been like eight or nine grams deep, maybe six or seven hours. Keep in mind, we're sixteen, seventeen, basic, you know, young potheads. And uh, I'm like on this log, and like I just see like fucking your man. Uh, I'm gonna call him just because if I don't give a shit. So I see fucking practically like walking up real fucking quick towards me and I'm fucking baked I'm like they're like trying to figure out what's the intent here I'm like I'm like what what's gonna happen here and then he fucking jumps me like you know well I'm not really jumps well he does kind of jump me because I'm like fucking dazed and confused he grabs me fucking throws me onto the log and he punches me 17 times in the face and kicks me in the back of the head keep in mind none of my face was busted no bruising no black eye no nothing no like you know at most I had a little scrape on my nose. Me and my younger brother have had like scary fights than that, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that was his little brother that I bumped into. And oddly enough, his little brother is like my age. I told him like, you know, if his brother wants to like apologize to me, that would be nice. Like, and it doesn't really bother me that he's so-and-so's brother, brother, you know what I mean? I just think that his brother's an absolute wanker. And he was like, yeah, fair, under understandable. Not much you can do. I wouldn't be talking so much shit about this if it wasn't for the fact I found out that this man, this grown ass man, bragged about attacking me. For years later, people have told me that he still brags about attacking me when he was 20 and I was 16. If my life ever gets that pathetic, just fucking kill me. Just f fucking kill me. Oh, I'm just standing up for a second because I, I think I might go for a smoke break, I'm not gonna lie, like a proper joint. I'm just gonna take off my headset and I'll be back in a few, right? Should I ping you on the Discord or should I just scream into the void when I'm here? We weren't really a cocaine group. We weren't really much about that. We sometimes do ecstasy when we were like 16, 17, but that would be very occasionally, like maybe once a year. Or, well, not once a year. What am I doing lying like that? But it wouldn't be, you know, as frequent as cocaine. Cocaine, like, we'd never do it. We'd never touch that shit until maybe, I guess, in our early 20s, that's what it, when it started getting prevalent, especially around COVID. My friend kind of pointed out that, like, you know, we weren't always like this. This wasn't normal for us. This was actually, you know, when we were 16, 17, and we knew other guys who were our age that did cocaine. I used to look down on them in a way, because I'd be like, oh, man, I just smoke weed, man. We just chill. Like, you know, I'm not like those guys. And now, go out for a few drinks. Let's get a bag of cocaine. That's 80 euros to a... Depends on who you ask. It's like... Could be 50 euros, could be 60 euros, could be 80 euros, could be 100 euros, could be 120 euros. Depends. You know what I mean? And you 
you're wasting that money that money is just being snorted up and you think that you're like having a great time you're like you know the coolest version of yourself you're not really the coolest version of yourself you're a fucking annoying prick that doesn't shut up and like i already don't shut up i've talked to people on cocaine a lot i've talked to a lot of coke users and i'll tell you one thing even when i'm on cocaine and i'm talking to a coke user i'm thinking to myself I don't want to be in this conversation. I'm thinking of specifically, right? There's this guy, right? I would have interacted with him briefly, maybe three or four times when we were about 17, 18-ish. I, I brought this, the guy, I brought him to my gaff and we stayed in my gaff in my house. There was a can of club lemon on my windowsill and he drank it. And I, I used to joke all the time, ah, oh, that guy is a, you know, scummer, scummer. You know, he stole my can of like club lemon and it got missed translated to him he thought that i was actually fuming angry as fuck about him taking my can of club lemon i don't know where he got that from because who gives a shit it's a can of club fucking lemon ah uh, you know he's no good he's no good stole me can of Clo club lemon and uh, he, he came back to me and he was like ah oh, fucking sorry about that can of club lemon you know i didn't know it meant so much to you he's on coke and like fucking i'm i'm on coke as well he won't understand a single word i'm saying uh, i'm trying to explain to him i don't give a shit about that and it's just a fucking joke it's just a fucking joke it's not that big of a deal and like the whole time like i i, I had a few bumps here and there i don't need to hear this i didn't ask for this i, I this is, you know it's fucking but it goes on for 40 or 50 minutes blah 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 and i'm like yeah cool man i'm really happy for you everything and he's just burning the fucking ears off me and it's like take Taking too fucking long. Like he just kept saying to me, "Oh, sorry about the club lemon. Sorry about the club lemon." And I'm like, "Man, I don't give a. F it's a. F it was a fucking joke. I kept trying to get it into his head. It's just a fucking joke. It was just." It was just a joke. It's uh, like I would fucking tell you you're a scumbag for drinking it's a club lemon as a joke as well. It's not that big of a fucking deal. He presumed it was like the fucking worst thing ever. Ear burning. So. I don't know how I got onto that tangent. And that's the thing about cocaine in general. They think that they're doing things quickly. They're not. They're usually fucking taking forever and wrapping around like in circles and just... Oh. It's not like I love club lemons or anything. It's literally not. It was just funny because he just took a can of like soda from my room without asking for it. That's really the thing. Got me roped into probably one of the worst fucking conversations of my life. It was awful. Oh, awful, awful. <sighs> but my best mate and a buddy of ours that we've known for years, also close mate, we're going to a pub on the way home just to get a final drink before we go home, right? Our buddy is like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get a two grams of cocaine for 200 euros on tick. Do you know what on tick means? It means on credit. I don't know what your local vernacular would be. Like, you know, you get it now, Pay later. We were like, what What the fuck is your point here? We're going here for our final drink. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're just going to go have one drink and then go home. You know, we all have work in the morning. He fucking says, no, 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 guys. Don't worry about it. You guys don't have to do coke. This is for me later for when I go home so I can go play Assassin's Creed and do cocaine. And it's like, what the fuck, man? What the <laughs> Like, like wh when did we start becoming like this? We weren't this group beforehand. We were... Ordinary stoners, you know, sometimes you get ecstasy and ecstasy becomes normal Then you just kind of like get bored of that then you do a bunch of acid you get bored of that And then you get like, you know, you keep trying these different drugs and then eventually you Take cocaine and you find out it's not as scary as you know things make it out to be and you might have a good night here and there But at the end of the day you are turning into a different person and a, a fake version of yourself that you think you are. You think you're that version of yourself, but you're not really. You're just hamming up aspects of yourself to create a persona. And that's what Coke really does. It's like, I think I'm a cool dude, so I'm gonna like lean into that cool guy persona. But at the end of the day, you're not that cool guy. You're a fucking douchebag, you know what I mean? And you look like a douchebag, especially when you're on cocaine doing it. And you just kind of put it into perspective where it's like, where do I want to be? That's the real crux of it for me anyway. <sighs> and I don't want to self-destruct. I do not want to self-destruct anymore. I am sick of w wanting to self-destruct. And I didn't... I still don't know why I used to want to self-destruct. I, I used to have a bit of a mindset of like, live fast, die young. If I go drinking, doing drugs, if I do this, 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 have a fucking blast, you know, I'll probably die quickly, but at least I'll die happy. And that came from a sort of fear of not really 
seeing a future for myself and I don't understand why I don't see a future for myself that's like a really weird thing in my head where it's like if somebody asks me where you're gonna be in five ten years I, I legitimately don't know how to answer that I can't really imagine that I'd like to say oh Oh, I'd love to have a house. I'd love to have a car. I'd love to have some independence. But, like, it's very hard to vision that. It's super hard for me. When I, I think of, it, like, the future, all I think about is just a prolonging of the present. And that's something that's, like, scares me. Because I know a bunch of guys who are 30, 40, and they don't have shit. They don't have shit. Like, some of them might have a kid, and that kid will be 10 years old, and it'll be like, your dad's here drinking. And... You don't know your dad that well. Like, what the fuck, man, you know? It's like... Like, I don't want to be one of those kinds of guys. I want to be a guy that's reliable, I guess. That's really what I want to be. And I want to have a future of my own. I want to actually complete goals. I want to complete tasks. I don't want to just keep being stuck in the same cycle of a Groundhog's Day where I'm just renting, 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 and just trying to survive paycheck to paycheck. I don't want none of that. I want actual growth, you know? And partying, you don't do that. <laughs> you don't. I very much felt since my friend group revolves around drink and drugs a lot, that getting sober would mean that I wouldn't have friends anymore. And it is kinda true, in, in effect, kinda. Cause like my best friend, the guy that I normally hang out with, I haven't hung out with him in a good few weeks now. And it's like, most of the spaces I see him at would be spaces where alcohol is served. And that's kind of like something I'm trying to remove myself from. And that's kind of a weird, scary aspect of sobriety where it's like, okay, I'm now trying to be sober. But now because of that, I'm also removing myself from areas where drink can be ser served. And in essence, that means that I'm not hanging around with friends as much as I used to. And then it's like, come to the gig, come to the gig, come to the gig. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go to the gig because I know there's drink there and I know I will drink. And then he's like, oh man, just smoke a joint. It'll be easy, it'll be easy, it'll be easy. And it's like, they don't get how it's easier said than done because I know what I'm like. I know I'll be there. I'll see the bear and then I'll make some sort of excuse to say, oh, I'll just have one. I know in my head, it'll never be one. I fully know in my heart. It's like, you know, I can say it to myself all the time. It's going to be one. But it's not. It's not gonna be just one. It's gonna be till 3 in the morning, till I'm fucking, like, you know, starting fights with some guy either in the takeaway or on the bus. Very easy to lose yourself in it. And, um, recently there was a guy I knew who overdosed on something. I don't know what drugs it was, but <clears throat> he overdosed anyway and he passed. And, like, just seeing the pictures of all of his family and friends, just sort of hanging around with him before he passed and everything it's just kind of like a little bit of a wake-up call that could happen to anyone you know that guy i i didn't consider him like the you know a big drug user i i consider him yeah he did party the same amount anyone else i knew partied but it wasn't like you know a heroin addict or like a complete addict that the drugs controlled his life. Um, I, I just know that he was at a house party with other people that were his friends and that he passed at that house party and then, you know, he fell asleep and never woke up. Age of 24, you know. I wasn't close with him at all, keep in mind. I wasn't close with him. I, I've like maybe hung around with him maybe six, seven times. But still, it's like... He wasn't a bad guy or anything, you know what I mean? I'm only finding my footing nowadays. Not drinking as much has really improved my sort of health. At the same time though, you might have noticed that I'm like breathing a lot heavier than the last few times we've spoken. I've... Turns out I've got asthma from all the fucking smoking, so... She was. I've done it to myself. Still need to quit my fucking cigarettes, man. It's like... Ah, <sighs> it's cause the one thing that's probably gonna fucking get to me because it's like everything else I can kind of make without you know but cigarettes uh, can't help it give me one brief moment I'm gonna do roll a cigarette in my room and just have a cigarette but I need to first grab my tobacco downstairs <laughs> Weezy and Santino getting on. 
as he passed my exit sign. Kept on driving straight in that dark future to the right and I am stuck between my anger and the blame that I can't face memories of something even smoking in my life in the place and I am terrified of weather cause I see you when it rains. God told me to travel, but this COVID on the plains And I love your mom, but it's the season of the stitch And I saw your mom, she forgot that I exist <laughs> I gotta get water <laughs> Bro, how did this guy even build up his house like that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I yeah, prove that, that I'm not a not. member of Al Qaeda? Prove that I'm not? I, isn't it like innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around? <laughs> <sighs> Why? Are, what are your reasons? Re, reasons? What are your reasons? Re, fuck. What are your reasons to it, suspecting me to be a member of Al Qaeda? Alright, so on a completely unrelated note, why don't you guys look at this explosion video I just sent you? Um, why are you sending us videos of explosions? Okay. Look at it! That shit's crazy, bro! What is this? House explodes and police approach Arlington VA home. Oh. What the fuck? Oh my That's god. That's fucking crazy! Oh, oh. my god. What? Jimmy, they hit Tower 2. <laughs> no, we're not. You're not doing that again. No, that's not. That's not allowed. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, OK. Did you ever like when you were a kid or not even a kid? Sometimes I still do it. You don't know the lyrics to a song. So you'll like make up your own lyrics. And sometimes those made up lyrics aren't even like English. They're yeah, like actual yeah. just gibberish. Really and you're like, that. I'm convinced that this is the song, even though you're like, this is definitely not the song, but I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna sing this. So the more tame one was, um, it was a Taylor Swift song, and it was like, got a long list, uh, got a, I thought it was got a lot, lot of Starbucks lovers, but it's got a long list of ex lovers, but I thought it was got a long list. Wait, it's or, not got a, Starbucks? Lovers? No, it's not. It's got a long list of ex-lovers, not got a sure it's not Starbucks, Starbucks lovers. I promise it's not Starbucks. It is. I sta really it is thought it was Starbucks this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is from the song Titanium, uh, where they go like, bulletproof. I always thought, and I don't know why I didn't think of bulletproof. I just, you know, maybe I just wasn't thinking of bullets and I was like an innocent little kid. I sung this song for years saying, bullet grew. Like, bully grew. What? What the fuck? That's not a word. It is, is complete it? gibberish. It doesn't mean anything, but I didn't know what it was, so I just sung bully grew, bully grew, instead of bulletproof. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm yeah, kind of no. stupid or just like. You're, yeah, no, that lazy. was pretty self explanatory what that word was supposed to be. I didn't know. Given the I didn't know until I looked up the lyrics. I had to look the lyrics up because I was like, I've been singing it like Beligru for years and I don't actually know how this song goes. So I'm going to look it up. And I found out it was Bulletproof. And I was like, how did I go my entire life not knowing it was Bulletproof? <laughs> that's, okay, so that's I'm glad I wasn't the only one in the Starbucks thing, but I, I really have no excuse for Titanium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, one, that one's definitely... I don't know, yes. just the line of logic I would go down. It's like, Beligar, that doesn't sound right. Oh, she's talking well, yeah, about I mean, like, being I knew unhurtable. It I knew hmm. it wasn't right. I just didn't, like, know <laughs> what else it was. If Beethoven saw a Transformer, he'd die on the spot. <laughs> I think he'd more so die like on the spot. Like a Victorian child with a Dorito. <laughs> a Victorian child with a Dorito? Transformers 1986. This was Stan Bush's debut, actually. It was his first first uh, venture into the movie industry. And oh, you're like a little creature sitting in my lap. You're so cute. I can so feel the cute. warmth radiating off of you. He made six songs for the soundtrack. Are you talking about Transformers again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Stan Bush. It was a pretty high amount of songs for, you know, an animated movie back then. That, that is know. a good point, yeah. The guy was kind of revolutionary. Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> you would say anything. It's amazing, I swear to God. I do. I could hype up Maybe. anything to you, and you'd be like, wow, that's so great. Dude, the Transformers you know, movie was okay, but the part where the cars all start fucking each other was, like, unnecessary, I think. Yeah, no, that, that oh, scene, they went a little that. bit far That was that really scene. weird. Yeah, that was Sandbush really actually weird. protested, so he didn't write the song in that scene. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> rocking back and forth like a... Because um, I'm rocking out right now, alright? Okay. Dude, Moxie, you are defective. Yeah, I was gonna say... <laughs> I, I... Oh my god, Stan Bush instruments of destruction uncensored lyric version? Yes. You're still talking about the Transformers, dude? Dude, what is your fucking problem? <laughs> The animals, the animals, they came on by twosies, twosies, elephants, and kangaroosies, roosies, children. Oh, there you go, Lord. yeah. They, wow, That's the damn, arc right. song. That was pretty good. So, weren't you know when Weezy was supposed to meet us here? I thought we were doing something. Sir, so, where is Weezy and Tin? That's what I I'd say. Say oh, oh. oh.